ivory dish so uh we Uh, yeah. for any dirt or any anything like that but then we always do a second shampoo in one or, or one of these shampoos and it depends on different things based on coat texture uh, how dry the coat is um, we do use volumizing shampoo yes the pure pores volumizing shampoo for uh, bracelets and things like that. And, and on some of the toy poodles, we find the volumizing shampoo works, works better. Uh, we never use whitening shampoo. Uh, that's something that um, we, you know, we've, the whitening shampoo tends to dry the dogs out too much. And uh, let me, I'll turn my camera around so you can see. Uh, we we found that the whitening shampoo tends to dry the dogs out too much, and um, it works really well for one time. Uh, the first time that you do a dog in whitening shampoo, they look great. Uh, but what happens is, is you end up with so many of them that have that blue look to them after a period of time, and it ends up um, on an, a really extended period of time. They get a, a dull gray look to them that um, really I find unnatural looking. Uh, the the shampoo, the pure the uh, whitening shampoos tend to really dry the coat out also over a period of time, and I and I find that they're more destructive in the long run. The best thing is to just wash your whites regularly. If they get urine on them, uh, wash. If they get stained from dirt, wash. It, it works far better over a longer period of time to just wash them on a regular basis than it does to use whitening shampoos. Okay, thank you. So you said you use this soap for first? Yes, first we use usually Dawn or sometimes Ivory. Um, it just it, it just depends, mostly Dawn. And I find that um, we put the Dawn on dry. Uh, we'll drizzle it on before we wet the dog. And that will, then when you wet the dog, it is far easier to get the coat wet. Um, poodles have a, you know, naturally water repelling coat. And for like a big, a big standard poodle, it can be very difficult to get them wet. Um, yeah. without putting the dawn on first. It's different with a toy poodle or a miniature poodle, but with a standard you, poodle. You don't use a hydro bath or that type of bath. We don't, no, no, we, we, we don't. Could you show us the your shampoos again? Oh Could I show you the, the shampoos? Sure. Yes. Yeah, so sure. Uh, hang on, there you go. So those are the ones that we use predominantly. This all system super cleaning, the pure pores hydrating, and also the pure pores hydrating conditioner we use the most. Um, we've we yeah, have same, used same conditioner for show and uh, maintenance. Uh, yes, generally yes. Um, yeah. Sometimes I will use. Uh, a different conditioner, but we never use uh, oil. None of, the, none, none of the dogs ever go in oil. I think that's a little bit of an old fashioned technique. And you know, years, years ago, it was very common to put uh, poodles in oil. But I think it's very detrimental to the coat when they, uh, they end up getting very scaly and dry in the oil. And then also, when you take them out of the oil, they, they mat like crazy. Yeah, um, and, yeah. and I think, it, it, in essence, anything, any benefit you got from the oil is diminished once within a month of taking them out of the oil. Um, so, we, we, yeah, we also use a moisturizing conditioner. Uh, I think that helps on the dry coats. and and. Uh, we will, we do use other products, which I can show you. Uh, we use a, a Tero spray when we brush them out, um, but we'll, we'll, we can get to those. Uh, I explain about shampoo. Jump. 
あの今さっき紹介したシャンプーなんですけども最初にあのクリスはあの実装プーであのいきなりあのシャンプーする前にそれをちょっとかけちゃいますでその次にあのオールシステムの,あのレンズで洗ってでフィアポーズの,あのハイドレーティングシャンプーでそのコンディショナーを使いますであのコンディショナーシャンプーもあのショーの時もメンテナンスも基本的にを使う<笑>でホワイトニングシャンプーもあ,のあるんですけどあ使いますけれどもどうしてもホワイトニングシャンプーを使っはちょっとクリストにはちょっと使うとちょっとコートがドライになりやすいそれとあの、まあ、1回使ってきれいになるのはいいんですけども何回も使い続けていくとどうしてもあのコートがちょっとグレーがかったりきたりしてあのちょっと自然な白色がなくなってきてしまうので、まあ、クリスが一番ホワイトあの子にいいのはもうそのホワイトシャンプーに限らずあのとにかく汚れればまめに洗ってきれいにしていくのが一番コートあの保つにはいい。OK、All、right、sorry、hang on、let me turn my camera around。So、um,、yeah、we do use、we use、um, the Sartero flash。Uh, we'll use that in some of the dry ones. And then actually, Jesse, can you grab that blue one right there? The, well, both of them, the, the Mad X and that one, both of those, yeah. So、uh, we do use these two Arturo products too.、Um, yep. When we're doing different things, we'll use that for、um, when we're brushing out if they have a lot of static.、Uh, sometimes with this, This actually is a fairly, <laughs> fairly good conditioner when you're brushing them out, too. I don't use it that much, but I, I do use the static one.、Uh, I also will mix up the hydrating shampoo. I like these、um, Artero spray bottles, I think they、uh, actually work really well. And、um, I'll dilute some of the Pure Pores conditioner in、mm -hmm. the spray bottle. and, and Uh, sometimes, yes,、yeah, so、sometimes we'll use Crown Royal, which has been around for ever. <laughs> It's one of the、That's、most popular. Number eight. I'm sorry, Kazuo, I couldn't understand That's that. Not, num number eight, number three, or one?、Uh, I think it's number three that we use. Number three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We use、uh, the Crown Royal as well, diluted in those spray bottles. But I think these work really well because、um, they don't. Get them too wet, they give a nice fine mist. They're definitely、uh, you know, a, a good thing to buy.、Um, as far as、uh, brushes and combs, I, we use the Doggy Man, I, let me see if I can show you here. The Doggy Man slickers,、um, really good. We like those.、Uh, combs, I like the, the Madden combs,、uh, really good.、Uh, I will tell you, a friend of mine,、um, Jess Carlson, told, told me a couple years ago you can buy them on Alibaba,、uh, a, a very similar one, for about、mm -hmm. half the price. <laughs> so, <laughs> but、uh, yeah, we use like, this kind of a wider comb.、Um, you can see. We do use this Artero comb.、Um, It's good, in, it's good when you're trimming for fluffing up the legs on puppies, that kind of thing.、Uh, I will say, like for me, these are the scissors I use. We have more than probably 30 pairs of scissors, but I, this is a pair of guides that I use. This is a pair, actually,、uh, Mawako Hazaka gave me、uh, these pair of scissors 25 years ago. I use these for probably.、Um, I don't know, 70% of the trimming I do. That's not a very big one. I think that's only, what size is that? It's like seven inches. It's not a particularly big scissor. I don't like the really big scissors. For standard poodle puppies, I use these、uh, Utsumi Nova、uh, scissors.、Uh, you can buy, I, I bought these maybe 15 years ago, and they were not very expensive. I think about $150.、Um, I, I have. As I said, maybe more than 30 pairs of scissors.、Um, and so we use for a, a, a variety of different things. But、yep. you don't, I don't feel you need to go out and spend $500 on a pair of scissors 
yep. all of those scissors, are probably not one of them costs more than $200. Uh, mm -hmm. And the more important thing is keeping them oil, keeping them sharp, uh, is very important. We we sharpen uh, the scissors regularly and drop them that I don't mistreat them in any way. I think that's that's very important uh, with the scissors is to, to make sure you you um, maintain them well. Okay, thank you. So, Taki no spray could you show those sprays again? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, these, these, all right, hang on, let me show you, turn that around, and, yeah, oh, hang on, I did the wrong one, there you go, so, so, so cut on the yeah. spray, the static, the flash to come at the mock, just to look at the top of the machine, the other no, 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 spray bottle got so good, can you take the, my own, like, and fear pose, no condition, I did, just to spray, study to car. あとまあちょっとクラシックの昔からみんなが使ってるあのクラウンロイヤルのナンバー3、あれいまだにちょっとたまにそれも使ったりしています。で、えー、次は、クジュショーでいうはシザーセンコームス、ネクスト。Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Oh, actually, can you give me a pinbrush?、Uh, yeah, so as I said, we use the doggy man、uh, slickers in different sizes. Yeah. 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 を使ってますし、してコーム類ですね。これマダンのコームとか、まあちょっとあの細かいやつ、ちょっと薄みみたいなタイプのもあの入れるときは使ったりします。で、ハサミなんですけど、これ25年に前にもらったやつが一番の品で、未だにこれもう本当トリミングの 75% くらいはそれで終わらせてる。もうそれがもう未だに使っている現役のハサミです。で、あと内海のノーバー、これも15年分前ぐらいに買ったやつで。まあ、これも150ぐらいドルぐらいで買ったようなハサミですかね。でもう,もう全部のハサミ、大体いいペア、大体いい30本ぐらいハサミ持ってるんですけども、もう大体いい全部200ドル以下ぐらいの、そう高いハサミっていうのは特に使ってるんです。ただ、あのー、もうオイルは毎回使って、で時には定期的に出して、そのメンテナンスはしっかりするように心がけてます。And you got what pin brush do you use? Ah, yeah, sorry. So I,、yeah. we... Usually use these Artero pin brushes, but I also have used the Madden pin brushes, and I and I quite like the Madden pin brushes,、um, which are extremely similar. Yeah. So pin brush is Artero. I'm going to use the Madden. 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 I'm going to use the I'm not so technical. I don't know how long the pins are on that, but but you want the pins to be a, a decent length, especially for the standard poodles, and reasonably soft. You know, there has to be some strength to the pins. It can't be too soft, but you don't want it so hard that it works almost like a cone. And the、uh, Madden brushes are are really good for that. そうアルテロとマダンのブラシはちょうどあのピンの硬さもちょうどよくてで長さも長すぎず短すぎずでもうあの使い勝手がいいのであの気に入って使っています。Yes? Yeah. All right. And then I, I was going to say there's a pair of Guide. Actually, Guide make very good scissors. They've been around for a long time. The, those are a little bit more, but I, I like those. But as you can see, This is the biggest pair of scissors I use.、Uh, even though I do a lot of standard poodles,、mm. I don't use very big scissors. So, my name is Mita Murata, I'm going to say, 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 I'm going to そんなに長いハサミは使いません。結構短いのでやっちゃいます。Yeah, maybe I would trim faster if I use bigger scissors. <laughs> so, okay. Okay, so let me sit this here, I guess, and I'll turn. I'll have Jesse come help me. Hang on. 
すみません。すみません。カズさん。はい。Excuse me。はい。あの今ねご質問ちょっとこの場でよろしくお願いしたけど、外部のシザのモデルは何ですかというご質問が今来てます。あ、uh,、Greece。Yes。Uh, one audience w a n t to see you as Caesar's the, 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 the guy who s e e us model. Do you know what model?、Uh, uh, I tell you what, let me, let me grab him. The guy and the curves are guy too. So I think, I don't know, for some reason I thought it said、uh, Rhino 88 or something like that, maybe.、Uh, Special stainless al steel alloy. What does that say? That says, it does say something. Rhino 880 is what that is. No, is that an older one or a new one? That's a nice one. Yeah, no, that's an older one. It's probably、uh, at least 20 years old.、Yeah. This, this is sure, it. Yeah. It takes care of them. It's very difficult to see, but it says Rhino 880、yeah. on the model. And then the, the curves,、uh, what does that say? It says all American 100. But the same thing, these are, these are more than 20 years old, these、uh, guy of scissors. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The, the, these guy curves are, are fantastic. And I v e same thing, I have bought more than 15 pairs of curves. Over the last 20 years, and these g u y b e are still the best. I just get, the, I have a very good guy who sharpens them, and I still use them all the time.、Um, it's just important to keep them oiled and sharp, is really the most important thing.、Um, the other one, the, the,、um, the Novas, I, I like for doing standard poodle puppy legs because.、Um, The blade is, is thick, but not too thick. It、um, has a good weight to it. You don't want to scissor when, you drew, when you're scissoring、uh, like puppy legs or the body, you don't want to scissor that's so light that you feel like it bounces off of the hair. And so let me grab them over here. But I find that、um, these Novas have a, a the, you know, the, the blade is a fairly Good, I, I believe it's Utsumi makes these.、Um, but I, 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 for doing legs, these are the best ones I've found so far.、Um, as I said, I, I have lots and lots of scissors from different companies.、Uh, I mean, I could show you down there, there's、uh, probably in the bottom drawer, there's probably 25 pairs of scissors packed away down there.、Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I find I have some favorites that work really well, and I use the same ones over and over. These ones, as I said,、um, Morocco Hazaka gave me these. I don't know what brand that is, but I assume they're Japanese. But I've used these,、um, and I do the majority of my trimming with these scissors. And、um, they're not particularly expensive, but.、Um, The weight is good, you know, that they're a little, for me, they feel a little bit heavy in your hand, but not, not cumbersome. So, 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 So,、um, for clippers, I predominantly use now the Arturo Spectra.、Um, I love these.、Uh, yeah, Rachel, Rachel says the same thing. She loves them. We've、uh, been using these for probably about two years, and、um, I just think they're fabulous. You know, the, the battery will last.、Uh, Far the best adjustable blade of any、uh, cordless clipper.、Uh, they're fairly light. You know, you can use them all day, all day long.、Uh, yeah. You can adjust the speed on them.、Uh, I use them on high all the time. I find you know, it just cuts better.、Uh, 
Uh, they do have a, you know, a burden that will tell you when they're too, you know, laboring too much and they need to be oiled, which is important. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I stress that to people that work for us all the time. Uh, mm -hmm. Oiling the clipper blades uh, is very, very important. Uh, you, you need to make sure that the blades are oiled regularly because um, there's less friction, uh, the, the blades won't get as hot, they cut better, they don't jam. So I always try to stress whenever I go to clipper a standard poodle, I will oil the blades before I start clippering pretty much every single time. Um, and often I will, in the process, you know, I, I usually will clip the face first and then I will usually do the feet afterwards and I'll re-oil the blade before, before I do the legs to make sure that, use the, the round thing to uh, just, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll usually uh, re-oil the blade before I do the legs. So uh, it's, to me, oiling the clipper blades is extremely important for, for getting a good cut and good finish, but also for the blade not getting hot. Yeah, okay, thank you. So, I'm going to use the clipper for 2 years, but I'm going to use the clipper for 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 the clipper プードルするときは顔から剃るんですけども、まあ必ずスタンダードプードルするないあのすり始める前にオイルをさして、してまあスタンダードプードルだったら顔とか剃ってその後また足の前にもう一回刺したりする。あのオイルをとあの刺すことによってあの熱くもなりにくいですし、でああの刈り上がりも綺麗になるし、してあの歯の寿命も伸びるので、本当にこのオイルというのをしっかりあの。補ってやって使っていくのが大事です。Thank <laughs> I if I use now also if I use cordless clipper and I do still use a uh, sorry uh, not a cordless clipper if I use a corded clipper I do use uh, the Andes clippers um, I can I can show you and I do I like the wall blades um, mm -hmm. I predominantly you know we use a forty blade for most of the clippering we do. Um, I don't really use anything. Occasionally, for other breeds, I might use a 10 blade or a 15. But 99% of the clippering I do is with a 40 blade. Uh, and I will time the clippering out um, depending on, on when the show is. So um, if I, uh, if let's say the show is on Saturday, I, I like to clip of the face and the feet on Wednesday. I like uh, the face to be a little bit grown in uh, and it, I think it gives a little bit smoother finish to them so by Saturday the face looks a little softer. I don't like the face freshly shaved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially on a, like on a black I don't like the face to look white. I like it to have like a little bit of uh, the black fill back in on it. On a white, it's not not as important on a white, but on a black, I don't like that uh, hard white look of the clipped face. Now, I do like the legs to be very clean uh, and freshly shaved. So usually what I will do is if I bathe the dog on Friday for the show, I'll clipper the legs on Friday morning. So it's just one day before the dog show. Uh, because I do like the legs clean. A lot of people leave more hair on the legs, 
And especially on the blacks, what happens is, is you end up, they, it starts to grow back. There's like little waves and cowlicks. And I don't like that look. I, I, I like it to be as fresh and as clean as possible. Especially on, right on a special. I, if I go to the show, sometimes I'll show five standard poodles for three or four days. It's hard to keep the legs freshly clipped every day. So on class dogs, right, I don't always um, clip the legs every day. But on the specials, I will almost always run over the top of the legs almost every single day on, a, on the specials to keep them yes. with that fresh look. At least every other day. If I don't do it, you know, it, let's say it's a four-day weekend. If I didn't do it the second day, I'll definitely do it on the third day. So, so would you do the black when you shave? Same, same, usually about three days before yep. I do the face and the feet. Yep. And the same thing on the blacks. I don't like them to have white feet yep. from being yep. fresh, freshly clipped. I like the feet. I like the yep. feet very clean and even, but I like just a more, you know, a little bit of growth yep. on the feet so they don't yep. have that white look to them. Yeah. Okay, thank you. えっと、コードのクリッパーの場合は、え、まだにあの、アンディスのクリッパーを使ってます。で、あの、歯はウォールの歯を使うのが好みなので、ウォールの歯で、だいたいもう、だいたい40、ほとんどの、ま、90、9
I don't go very fast. And so, um, you know, when I'm forced trying, I see people, hang on, I'll grab the cord here. Right, right. It's not a golden retriever. And I see people, they'll start to force dry a dog and they're, they're, you know, going like this. I don't do that. I do, I separate and I go slower. And I go in more in rows like this. So the, yep. yeah, it's further away. But I do a much slower way of force drying. And I see a lot of people just kind of going like this. And I think it, it makes the hair spiral around and it, it doesn't work well. <laughs> And I and I work in a. Hold on, please. I yeah. just stop now. Too much. Then he changes. Now, that's not. Here, here, here. 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 Here, クリスは K9 の,あのフォースドライヤー使ってるんですけどもであのヘッドの,あのノズルはあのポインティーなあの今持ってるタイプのラウンドのやつがやっぱりあのクリスは気に入ってますフラットのやつも使う方多いんですけど、まあ、クリスはちょっとフラットだと乾きすぎる感じがして、まあ、あと毛をあの分けやすいとかいうのがあってあのこのポインティーなやつがあの一番自分に合ってるそうです。で、まあ、あの、オースドライヤーの出口のことでしょはい、出口です。そうそう、あの、平たいのじゃなくて、丸いスプーンの状の細いやつのことですね。すはい、はい。で、ええー、まあ、順番としては、まずは、あの。なんていうの、ね、ロゼットをやって、テールロゼット、して、ボディの方を。一回り乾かして、やります。それで、まあ、五分ぐらいで、あの。まずはあの水を飛ばしていきます。で、あのもう一回も戻って、その時はあの毛を分けてあのラインドラインあのラインドライって言うんですかね。あの毛を分けながらあのラインブラシする時みたいに毛をしっかり分けて、その今度は毛を伸ばしながら伸ばしていく感じで、でゆっくり動かします。あのよくあのブラスターあのフォーズライヤー使うのでこうあの振っちゃう振っちゃうのね。バーって振るのは好きじゃない。いるんですけども。まあ、そういう研修に短い研修とかだったらそれでもいいと思うんですプードルの場合はその毛を水を飛ばすだけじゃなくてその毛を伸ばしていくっていう感じで、はいまあ、伸ばしながら毛をしっかりストレートに伸ばしていくというかゆっくりゆっくり動かしてやっていきますあと,と,、はい、あとね、えー、と近くでちょっとさ毛をよく見せてもらえばすごいどれだけ伸びてるかわかるし。はいでもね、一番よく仕事してるのはちょっとこれ日本語で訳して言って、はい、あの PCA にもう何十年も行ってるけども、はい、小坂さんと朝一番で会場に入ってるはずなのに、はい、入った瞬間にクリスはもうね犬は洗ってホースドライヤーかけてるの毎年、はい、クリスが一番会場に入る、はい、だからこの人たちは本当に会場に一番に入って一番早くから仕事してる。So, Toshi is saying he, when go, he goes to PCA with cards,、yeah. he always、yeah. oh, he got the first person in the ring, but you always already there. They already you wash them, join the dogs. So, that's why you are the best. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I, I dry, you know, I bathe and dry all the dogs、uh, just. You know, obviously, we have assistants that work for us, but I do my specials myself all the time.、Um, and I'm actively involved watching、uh, the people that work for us doing drying, clippering,、mm. all those kinds of things all the time.、Uh, I, never I never, you know, any of my top specials, I've always done. The bathing, the drying, the clippering, the scissoring. It's never left to an assistant. And it's not that,、um, you know, we haven't had assistants that are capable of doing it. We have had many assistants capable of doing it. But, right. But that's why people come to learn from me. And I feel that the people that own our specials expect the work to be done by me. And, and that's what they pay for, in essence. Is for my finishing touches, not just an assistant. And as I said, we've had many, many skilled assistants that can easily do it. But I, I do it every day. I am in the kennel grooming 
every day. Um, you know, I have <laughs> so, yeah. So, you might have any. Oh, sorry, I just explained to Japanese sure. people. Yeah. Sure. So, uh, Chris was uh, a special one who was very good at the work of 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 the w そういう方もやっぱりクリスがやるっていうのを期待してあの預けてもらってるので自分の責任であのまあ来から乾かしかすべてやるようにしてるのでやっぱりちょっと早くからやるようになってますでまあ普段のあのケネルでもやはりそういうスペシャルの子はすべて自分で手入れしますしあのそのアシスタントしたのができないってわけではないんですけどもやっぱりその自分の責任なのでその責任持ってすべてやるようにしていますで、ね、会場に会場に入る前に。会場ほら一番に入ってるけど入る前には自転車でスタンプを全部会場の周りスタンダードポートを自転車で全部歩かしてから会場入るんですよすっごい早くからやってるこの人一人で Also you do exercise all the dogs before getting the ring you use bicycle and then you give them run Oh yeah 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 the exercise is very very important For the dogs, and so we rotate them out. We have yards, we rotate them out in the yards、uh, to get exercise. But at the dog shows, yes, we will take a bike. I will run with the dogs. I usually uh, run uh, three and a half to four miles each day since coronavirus. I've been running a lot, but I take the dogs and run with them every day. I think it's important for the dogs to get out of the kennel, is one thing. But the exercise is very important for them as well. And also, then the bond, right, the bond that they develop between me and them, and they feel special going for their run. So, all of those things are very important. So, exercise is extremely important. I do have a treadmill, and so many of the dogs will go on a treadmill.、Uh, but I prefer to have them free exercise and. and Yeah, some dogs are not good on a treadmill.、Uh, some dogs do not work well and they, they don't run well on a treadmill. And so it's more disruptive to, to have them work on a treadmill. Some dogs love the treadmill. Like th this bitch, I take running, but she is just as happy to run on the treadmill. And she, she will go on the treadmill. You know, I, I take her, it's in the, the back room. But I will take her. She jumps up on the treadmill and she's wagging her tail, ready to go. I start it and she just starts running, no problem. And she can run, she can run without a lead or anything on the treadmill. Some, some dogs do not like it.、Um, some dogs do it because you make them, but, but the exercise is extremely important. For the, the muscling and the, the legs, the development, but also the development in the front, the way they carry themselves.、Um, so, exercise is extremely important. So, やっぱり、yeah. exercise is very important. And, the show 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 is very i m p o r t どく犬にとっても楽しいことなので気持ちも上がってきますしでハンドラーとやっぱり自分とっての犬につながりもできてきますでも普段だと大体 3.5 マイル以上ぐらいは走るようにしていますでまあケネルにはトレッドミルもあるんですけどもでまあまあ今テーブルに登ってる子なんかはトレッドミル大好きなのでそれでもう毎日走ってますけどもまあ犬によってはそういうのがあまり好きじゃない子もいるのでそういう子はまた別の子。でまあ、外で自由に走っていく感じで走られてます。まあ、その子によってやっぱ変わってきますけども、でもやっぱり本当に今度あの運動っていうのはその犬をいい状態に保つの大事なことなので、すごく重要視しています。Thank you. Yeah, sure. Well, that is, that's a one more point about the、uh, treadmill. The treadmill actually you can use for dogs. Sometimes you'll have a dog that will sidewind. And There are techniques you can use on the treadmill to train them to run in a straight line. And the, it, I find that the treadmill is less for an exercise point and more as a training aid. And what will work well with the treadmill is、uh, after a period of time, of, you know, the dog becomes relaxed on the treadmill. 
often they will learn to forget about looking around or being distracted and they'll learn to just run and they extend their fronts better in a more straightforward way. Um, mm -hmm. As I said, if you have dogs that will sidewind, you can teach them to run in a straight line. Uh, mm -hmm. I, we had a dog that would run and it was very close in the rear. And a friend of mine told me about a technique they use with Dobermans where they would trail a lead between its legs and it worked. She would, this particular dog would started moving um, wider in the rear. And so it, the, you can use the treadmill, but I actually think it's more about a training tool than an exercise tool. Exercise is better free and letting the dogs run and twist and turn and things like that. The treadmill is more of a training tool. So what, what used the between the legs for? So there, we had a dog that was very, it would move very close in the rear. And yeah. so my, Derber, my Doberman friend told me about it. Uh, with Dobermans, they would put a lead around its waist and they would mm -hmm. let a, a lead trail between its legs. And then on the mm -hmm. end, you would just put like a small weight that would make it go, mm -hmm. go uh, behind and so it would they would learn that the tr if they would if they would uh step on the lead it would pull them back oh. and so they would learn to oh. to run with their legs wider apart and it worked and, and this particular dog it really did work um mm -hmm. it took you know it wasn't an it's like every it learned to move wider in the rear and so that's why i say a tread a treadmill is far better for teaching technique. Um, mm -hmm. I will have dogs that go on the treadmill and they, they will run, uh, yeah. but what I work on is getting them to carry their head properly when they run, uh, to balance themselves. And often, you know, when they do carry their head up high and they balance, they'll extend better on their front. They'll flex off better on their rear. They don't have to go particularly fast on the treadmill, you know, um, What's the name of the brand we have for the treadmill? Um, Dog-a-dog, dog-a-dog. Yeah, it's very popular, you know, it's been around a long time, but the treadmill is good. And even for smaller dogs, the miniatures, um, you know, the miniature poodle that um, won PCA, Alex uh, from Sweden, she loved to go on the treadmill and I would put her on the treadmill, um, you know, almost every single day. She just loved to run on there. But with her, the same thing, she would go on there she would put her head up and she would just kind of exercise and she would extend beautifully on her front. And so it was good. They learn when they're moving to not be distracted, not worry about pulling off to the side or doing things because they have to concentrate on going forward. And um, yeah, okay. so that's good training. にもすごくあの役役に立つということで、まああのトレードミルに慣れてきた子だと、もうあの自分で動き出した時にやはりあの外で走ってる時、トレードミルだと周りに何も気にするものがないので、もう自然と集中してただ動くことだけにあの集中
essentially for me, I, I can give you yeah. a, a, a simple version of it. What's important in the continental trim is finding a good balance between the height of the, the rear bracelets and the front bracelets. Uh, people say they should be exactly the same. I don't think they actually have to be exactly the same. You balance it on, on the dog. Uh, what's important for me is that the, the uh, bracelets be round. Uh, I hear lots of people say, you know, you, you trim them like a toilet roll and then you just bevel the edges. I don't believe that's the correct technique for uh, doing uh, bracelets. I do believe that it should be contoured underneath and into the back of the foot, uh, that it should be round. A lot of people will do the the rosettes, or the bracelets where it goes straight down. And I, yeah, yeah, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, and I think what happens is that people um, would do these square boxes and they just bevel the edges. Yeah. When you have it straight in the back and it's viewed from the side, I think it gives the appearance of them being sickle hocked when they move. People say that having the straight line, um, mm uh in, in the back going straight down yes. will make them look shorter in appearance when they stand which possibly is true you can come on the side here Josie and show. uh it's possibly true that it does make them give an appearance of them being shorter but in motion it makes their rear legs look sickle hard so i think it is important that they be round and, and blended um yes. i don't like the same in the front and it's important to show like this this bitch has very good feet and it's important to show off the feet. I don't like the hair to cover the feet. I think if the dog has good feet, she, she has um, good strong pastons. And so you wanna show that off and accentuate those things. And, and I think that's the good feet and the strong pastons, if you come uh, uh, in front here, Jesse, if uh, having straight front legs, uh, important things to show off. And that's what I said earlier in uh, talking is understanding the breed standard, understanding what is correct for the breed. And, you know, that's what you want to show off in your grooming is these nice, straight front legs, strong pastons, good feet. The hair is up off of the feet. So it shows a roundness. I really don't like the square box look and then the beveled. And I, I, I understand the same thing people say oh they look it gives an appear a vertical appearance that they look mm -hmm. shorter but i i don't like that look i think pools are fluffy uh mm -hmm. i think they're round <laughs> I, yeah. I like them rounded <laughs> so do you make yeah. front bracelet slightly higher than the bracelet or same height uh generally i would say they're slightly higher slightly higher but it it and how how much uh height there is underneath the yeah. dog so that's why i say it's very important to understand the breed standard when you trim the dog and then you can uh show show off the best features and as i said you know like this bitch has very nice straight front legs good pastons good feet it's important to show those off. So I don't want big fluffy bracelets that are too high that would hide those things. She has a good length of leg. Yeah, she has a good length of leg and I wanna show off her, the daylight underneath the dog and accentuate that. I don't want the jacket to be too low and make her look lower. I don't want the bracelets to be too high and then it gives her a short legged look. Okay, thank you. So, I, so, I talked to Japanese, yeah, hold on please. Yeah, sure. So, まずブレスレットあの、
あの丸みをつけてであのしっかりとあのこの子なんか特に、まあ、スタンダードなんか特にフィートはほとんどいいのでそのしっかりしたいいフィートとパスターンをしっかりと作り強いパスターンにしてるようなイメージを意識して作っていきます。であの前から見た時もあの横がまっすぐじゃなくて丸みを帯びて上から下までつながっていくようにそういうイメージで作っていきます。してあのちょっと聞いたんですけどもあの結構あのフロントのブレスレットを気持ち高めに作ってる人が多いんですけども、まあ、クリスも一応、まあ、基本的には高いイメージで少し高いイメージで作るっていうふうに言ってましたただそれも全て犬によって変わってくるのでその犬の足の長さだとか胸の深さとかフロントの状態とかそういう状態によってそこら辺はやっぱり変わってきます。でやっぱりあのこのの子ははすごく体型もいいのでやはりあのそこをしっかり見せるようにあのアンダーラインもしっかり上げてあの作っていっているようにしています。Thank you, Chris. Okay, so、um, just base, basically with the rosettes as well. I like the rosettes to be round.、Um, yes. Different people have different things that you know. I don't work in a in a technical absolute way. I don't say that the line on the jacket has to be in line with the last rib. Balancing, finding the balance that is correct for the dog. I like the rosette to be to be round. Probably the only, yeah, yeah, yeah. The breed Santa poodles are supposed to be square in proportion, and they should have a good amount of leg underneath them. So whenever you're trimming, you want to accentuate that outline in the way. That you trim, you have to keep that in mind. You want it, you, you don't want the rosette to be too low down on the side. I think that、um, some people do more of a、uh, oval shape where it's longer in length. I don't understand that technique. That people think it makes them look shorter in loin. I don't believe that's true. I think the same thing when they're in motion. It makes them look much longer. You have to trim the dog for standing and for moving. It's very important after you scissor, I will have an assistant move the dog so I can see how it looks. I don't trim、um, with, I don't use a lot of mirrors in, in the grooming room. I just, I just never learn to use mirrors.、Um, I, I will have an assistant move the dog. And I think also another thing about the mirrors is it, it is a good technique to learn. But when you don't use mirrors, when,、uh, let me rephrase that. When you trim a dog and you use a mirror, you might be four feet away from the mirror, and then the、uh, reverberated view is then eight feet away from you. After the dogs look better, the further away you get. So, I'd never learn to trim with a mirror, and I think that finish work is very important to me. And having it nice and smooth and even, I will comb it many, many times to the same area many, many times to get a, a beautifully smooth, velvety finish. And I think a lot, you, could, you can tell a lot of the time people that trim in mirrors, they have a good basic shape, but the finish work is often not there because eight feet away it looks good. When I'm standing here trimming and I'm trimming this rosette and my head is only eight inches away, the finish work is much more evident to me.、Yeah. Um, that's something、uh, about finish work. But with the rosettes, it's, it's important to find the balance. Probably the only real rule I use is that the back of the rosette is never behind the front ed leading edge of the tail. I think that's, that's probably the only real、uh, hard and fast rule I use. Some people, the rosettes go a little further back, and I think it looks like they're, they're falling off their butt. Croup or the tail set. When they may not, they may not do that.、Um, mm. I like, yeah, these, these are all the things that I was taught. I like the rosette to be round.、Uh, some people, you know, I don't like the tails clipped particularly high. Even if they have really good tail sets, I still don't. About two finger widths is about all you need for the、uh, base of the tail. 
if they have a long natural tail, I can understand you might raise it slightly, but I don't like it clip it way up. You know, some people will clip it way up here on a natural tail. I don't like that look. I think it, it just looks out of place. It's not what I'm used to in my eye. It's not familiar to me. Um, uh, yeah. So I don't know if you want to explain okay. that, cousin. <laughs> yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> あの、クリスの場合はこうどこから何センチとか何とかいうそういう基準はもう全くほとんど使わないので、全ての フードロなので、やっぱりあの、特にこの ミラーで見ると、あの、やってるので、そっちょっとミラーではそんなにあの、そんなにあの、長く剃るのはあの、好きではないので、まあ、本当にいいテールセットの子でも今指2本ぐらい。で、カットと。で、まあ、アメリカなのであの、テールはドックしてるので、だいたいそれぐらい締めてますけど、まあ
that, that people say that that makes them look like they have long necks. I think it makes them look jowly and um, eunuch. <laughs> and I think it's very distracting. I think it's, it's uh, th that is because people don't, th they, they go to an extreme. They think that if I clip it lot lower, it gives the visual line that the neck is longer. But they don't understand that it shows off the fact that their dog is eunuch or that it has a lot of, it's very, uh, it has a lot of skin on the throat. Poodles are supposed to have a nice, tight, clean neck. They shouldn't have like all this jowly skin hanging down like that, which you can see when they clip it. It should be nice and tight. It should fit into the neck nicely like that. And that's what you want to see. You don't, you want a nice clean look on the neck. So that's one thing for me. There's um, really only a couple of things with the, tr with the jacket because it, every dog is different the way what I'd say are like the contact points, the point of the neck, the point of the elbow, the point of the body. Those things have to be figured out as to the correct proportions for the dog. Yeah. And then you have to figure out a blend and a balance to blend those essential points together. Um, and that is where the artistic part comes in, finding the right balance, how much hair should be there, how, how uh, tight it should be, how low. That is the artistic part of it, but you have to follow those basic things that you cannot change. If you have a dog that is low on leg, you can't change the point of the elbow. It's, it's immovable. You can clip the line higher, but the higher you clip on the line, then it becomes obvious that the elbows stick out, things like that. There's always a trade-off for the, the corrections that you make. And it's finding that moderate balance is the most important thing. It's not about being extreme. If it was, as I said, if it was about being extreme, it would just be a creative grooming contest. And, and many people forget that and they forget how it will look when the dog is moving in motion as well. Thank you. So maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, Good girl. The side of the neck. 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 クリッパーのラインはこう指をあのまあ喉も手根からこう下に下ろしていってこう胸が一番高いところそれからガクンと落ちるところがあるんですけど落ちるところの前の一番高いところそこのところを基準にしてそこまで反っていきますであのサイドもあまり幅広く反りすぎるのは好きではないのであのサイドもあの反りすぎないように意識してあの反りすぎるとどうしてもネックをあの下まで反ったり、サイド反りすぎるとあのプードルの皮膚っていうのはあのしっかりタイトであるできるのでそこのクリーンな部分があの綺麗に見えないですしそしてあの反りすぎると、まあ、あの U ネックに見えたりとかあのそういうところもあるのであのそこはあの必ずそれ以上下げないようにしていますで、えーまあ、それからの,あのボディのジャケットのラインはやっぱりあのエルボーとあとボディのポイントブ、えー、ネックとエ,エルボーと、えー、ボディのところを意識してそこをあの滑らかにそこら辺はもうちょっとアートの感じになってくるんですけどもにブレンディングしていってその自分のイメージに近づけるようにしていきますで,でやっぱりあの例えばあの足が短い子であのでそのまあ、エルボーをちょっと上に上げて刈ることもできますけど上げすぎると今度あの動いた時に、ね、エルボーが出ておかしくなったりとかいうこともあるのでどうしてもあのその動いた時も意識してそのどこか丸いところを補正していくっていうのを考えていくことが大事ですどうしてもあのそれを意識せずちょっとエクストリームな感じになってしまっていてあのそれはグルーミングコンペティションではいいかもしれないですけども読書だとやっぱり動いた時が一番大事なので。動いた時にもしっかり見える、そのバランスを考えて、グルーミングしていくことが大事です。Thank you. 
Okay. We almost forgot about the drying of the dog <laughs> after we did the four strike. So we use, just so you can show, we use a speedy dryer. Yeah. Uh, these are wonderful. They've been around forever. They come with a lifetime guarantee. Um, they're, they're very good because they get hot. They blow a tremendous volume of air. I'm not exactly sure, uh, you know, how many feet per, you know, whatever it is, feet per second, whatever. But the, the, these are by far the best dryers. Uh, we also used as a blue uh, X Power B16 dryer. Uh, we use that at the shows because it is very lightweight and, and transportable. Like, should have had one in here to show you, but yeah. but uh, those two dryers are essentially the two dryers we use. The technique yeah. that let me get my slicker brush and my pen brush. So the technique that I always use is after we finish, uh, we will force dry the body a second time. I will force dry the neck and the head a little bit, but I like to leave the head and the neck fairly wet. Um, it's just, you just want to blast off the excess water with the force dryer. Yeah. When I start to dry with the force dryer, the first thing I do is I dry, I always hold with my left hand, I'm right handed, I hold with my left hand. I separate and I will take the dryer and I teach everybody that works for me. I put the dryer on the left side and I have the air blow up and away from me and I will brush and separate all the way down with the dryer. I'd have the dryer on, but the noise would be really annoying. Yep. I dry the rosettes and the tail first. Yep. I lay the dog on its side. Yep. On Prada, Prada. Sorry, I lay Prada on its side. I always start with the dryer, as I said, on the left-hand side, and the air basically is blowing in this direction. And I start at the back of the body, and I will dry in lines all the way down the side of the the body on the show coat, all the way up to the ear, yeah. and I will dry under the chest, always blowing the hair basically up in that direction. Then I'll dry the front, the rear bracelet. I dry the inside of the bracelet on the opposite side. Yeah. I dry this bracelet, the inside of the bracelet on the opposite side. I will turn the dog around on the table, yeah. and with the dryer, I will raise it up, lay them down here, and I will start with the pin brush, yep. and I will brush in this direction. Same thing, the dryer is always on the left-hand side. The air is blowing in this direction. Yep. I separate it with my uh, hand and brush all the way down to the skin, work my way all the way down the neck, yep. the back of the body here. I then will dry the inside of the ear, the outside of the ear like that. Come on, product. Up. Then uh, I'll take take the towel off of the table. I will put the dryer on the table to make sure everything is dry because you don't want to lay the dry coat on a wet surface. Yeah. We'll lay lay them down on this side. Then in, in reverse, because the air is blowing in this direction that way, I will start at the ear and I will dry in lines, working down all the way down, blending into the neck coat, dry the body. Then I'll come back. The inside of the bracelet, this front bracelet is usually dry from drying the other side, but I'll re-go re over it to make sure it's straight. Finish drying here, finish drying here. Uh, then stand the dog up and I band them up before I comb them out. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll put the top nut in, but we forgot to go over the drying technique. I dry every dog exactly the same. So uh, I teach every, yeah. So you do the judge side first? I do the judge side first, yes. yes. Yeah. And you and never I, use the force dryer on the toy? No, I never use a force dryer on a toy ever. I always do just a stand dryer. Yeah. And even, even on, I will use a force dryer on the miniatures, mm -hmm. but very little. And I only use, this one has two, the force dryer has two engines. Yes. I, when I do a miniature, I only use one of the two, en, two engines on the, 
on the, you can see, you know, there's two, two switches. I only will use one when I do a miniature. I don't want it as strong. And then also you can, when you dry the neck hair, yes. you can turn one of them off so it's not as strong and not as powerful on the neck. I think it's important that the, the head, the neck hair, and the ear hair is still fairly damp. Yeah. I know uh, I could probably groom more dogs if I force dried them more, but uh, I think to get the the good finish and the good look takes time. Yeah. You can only brush so much. Puppies. Yeah, yeah. Pu puppies, standard poodle puppies. I will use the force dryer more because you end up washing their legs and tails and things like that at the dog show so much that I will dry their legs more with a force dryer, yeah. So you use more uh, for maintenance, force dryer? Yes, 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 yes definitely. Okay. So now, I just got a little bit of time, and I just got a little bit of time. I just got a little bit of time, and I just got a little bit of time. First, I used force dryer, and I just got a little bit of time. Chris has explained the speed dryer, and I just got a little bit of time. それからもしかショーンの場合はエクスパワーのブルーのドライヤーもあのそれは軽くて持ち運びがいいので会場ではそれを使ってます。で、あのフォースドライヤーはトップノットの部分はもう少しだけちょっと軽く水を飛ばすぐらい後ろからかけていきます。で、えー、その後ロゼットから乾かしていくんですけども、あの左からあのドライヤーの数を当てて、して、あの指で、あ手であのしっかりかき分けてラインを作ってそしてあのスリッカーブラシで乾かしていきます。で、ロゼットを乾かした後、えー、体を乾かしてそしてその後、あ犬を横にしてやってそしてあのボディを乾かしていきます。で、あの後ろの方からまた前に向かって、えー、ボディを乾かしていって次は足を乾かします。で、あのブレスレットを、えー、外側を乾かして反対側の内側もそこで乾かしてであの乾かす順番は先にあのジャッジサイドから乾かしていきますで、えー、次はあの体勢を反対にして今度は、えー、トップノットをまたあのトップノットは前からあの今日立てるように後ろからです、ね、全部乾かしていきますで、えー、耳の内と外を乾かしてその後えー、受け立たせてテーブルをあの乾かしてやってあの横にした時にあの閉めてしまわないようにしっかり乾いた状態にしてこうやっていきます。で、まあ、あのフォースドライヤーはあの、まあ、ショーの時はあの少なめですねあのメンテナンスの上はもうちょっとかかやっていきます。で、えー、ミニチュアプードルなんかも使いますけどもそのにあのちょっとシングルでもやったりしてでまあ、スタンダードブーブルとかでもパピーとかだと結構あのフォースドライヤーで多めに乾かしてやったりで、Thank you! Okay.